a lot of times I'll be in a 200 mile run or something like that and I'm all jacked up. Body's broken, mind's broken, spirit's broken. I start to say, what if I can pull this off? When I first walked into the Navy SEAL recruiter's office, he looked at me and said, there's only been 35 African Americans in 70 years make it through. You know what I said to myself? What if I can be the 36th? It's the what if I can pull off a miracle. What if I can become someone that no one thinks I can be? And just that, just me talking about that, I have the hair going up on my arms because it makes me just like, what if I can be that guy that people who call nigger and this and that, and now I'm speaking at Tom Ferry's event. What if? That's it. I, I came home one night from work spraying for cockroaches and um, long story short, I turned on the, the um, Discovery Channel and I saw some guys going through Navy SEAL training and they were going through Hell Week and they were getting their ass just beat, you know, in and out of the water, guys ringing the bell, um, they were just suffering and I was weighing like 297 pounds and I had to make a change in my life, you know, I was at an all time low and I wasn't going anywhere, and I was exactly what everybody said I was gonna be, which was nothing. So I had to make a change. What was it about seeing suffering? That's, that's really interesting, and I actually get it, but I wanna hear you explain it. Why suffering was the thing that triggered that thought? Well, for me, growing up, I came from a horrible background. I got called nigger every day of my life growing up, um, lived in a small town. The Klan headquarters at that time was about, um, 20 minutes from where I lived, the uh, one of the high ups in the KKK son sat behind me in two classes, so he called me nigger all the time. Got my first car, they spray printed nigger, we're gonna kill you on it. So I was just an insecure, scared kid. And the only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. I'm gonna say the exact opposite of what the world, today's world is saying. So we read a bunch of books nowadays. As, as humans, we, we want to find out how to be someone else. What we don't do is we don't go inside. So literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that says, like, like we're writing a book every day of our lives. Every day we're seeing who we are as people. When I was growing up, I, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. So I would make up stories so, so that you would accept me into your world. I would, uh, everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I can blame kids at school, I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. Great mom, but she was doing her thing. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading. And I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what, for me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell, what the f is wrong with David Goggins? Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb. Okay, roger that. How do you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. The cookie jar is something I invented. As you all know, your mom has a cookie jar, and sometimes you might have an Oreo, sometimes you might have a Chips Ahoy, sometimes you might have an oatmeal raisin cookie. You never know, it's just in there. My cookie jar has every single failure and success of my life, something I overcame. So what happens in, this, in, in time of life when you're stressed out and things get bad, even the hardest guy in the world, me, everybody thinks, and I think I'm the hardest guy in the world. You gotta believe that. You gotta believe you are something. I will, in my mind, reach into my cookie jar 
And sometimes you forget how hard you are in times of, of, of need. You, you, because you're, you're stressed. But you forget, I'm a f Navy SEAL, I'm a Ranger, I'm this and that. But you forget all that because your life sucks. I calm down, take that one second, get control of my life, reach in the cookie jar. Wow, well, you got called nigger your whole life and you're now the only person in history to do this, this, and this. Put it back in the cookie jar, reset my mind. You have to remind yourself of how badass you really are in times of need. That's the cookie jar. The best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what, yeah, I went through Hell Week and man, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> no, that takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to start. It, it, it allows me to express right. where I was at at a point of my life. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? Why, how will you learn from me? People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. Oh God, I love that. We tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up people. It's okay, trust me, it's okay. You might be called nigger one day, it's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some faggot or gay word, it's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit. And you'll read about me years from now. How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thick in your skin. When you're feeling that fear, that anxiety, can I tell you, that is not the spirit of God. In the spirit of God, there is liberty. There is freedom. God says that I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of what? Love, power, and a sound mind. But when the enemy wants to restrict God's people, he, he puts us in a pythonic hold to squeeze out every ounce of courage, every ounce of faith on the inside of us. It's the python coils that he wraps around you and I's life but by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ we bind the spirit of fear from over your life we bind the spirit of fear from in this atmosphere we lose God's confidence in the mighty name of Jesus he says that we can have the mind of Christ so we do not have to operate in fear and oftentimes what God is calling you to do is gonna be packaged in difficulty and you're gonna need courage to step into what God is called. On the other side of your fear is your greatest destiny. On the other side of your fear is your purpose waiting on you, sitting there with legs crossed, waiting for you to get there. But we have.